With great confidence in our caucus, I will not seek re-election to Democratic leadership in the next Congress. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. The political career of Nancy Pelosi started long before she became the first woman Speaker of the House. It started at childhood. Her dad was a former mayor, also a former member of Congress, so she walked the halls when she was six, seven, eight years old. That is really where her, her foundation comes from. It's the D'Alessandro family that, that provides her instinctive political, uh, tactical thinking. Pelosi moved to San Francisco in 1969 with her husband Paul, but remained active in democratic politics. She was really a stay-at-home mom for a big part of her early life, but she was always an activist, and that's where you really saw her power as a fundraiser begin. In 1987, Pelosi ran for the U.S. House of Representatives and won in a competitive special election. She arrives here and immediately became friends with a bunch of sort of young up-and-comer, hard-charging Democrats. Famously, at the very first dinner that she showed up with all these new friends of hers, Congressman George Miller introduced her to this entire crowd as, here is the first female Speaker of the House. It's now my privilege to present the gavel of the United States House of Representatives to the first woman Speaker in our history, the gentle lady from California, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> In the first two years of her first speakership, she was cautious in each of those first two years. And then once they had the full force of the White House, Senate, and House in Democratic control, those next two years, she really unleashed the big liberal agenda. By the fall of 2010, Democrats scored major legislative wins, like the Affordable Care Act, a Wall Street reform bill, a massive stimulus, and the Recovery Act of 2009. However, this show of strength did not help in the midterms. None of those things were particularly popular at that time, and they were delivered a crushing blow. They lost 63 seats in 2010 midterms, and that set Democrats back for years. It was the first time that she stepped down as speaker, but she did something a little different than most speakers had done in the past. She said, I'm actually going to stay and I'm going to dare you all, all Democrats, to keep me as the top leader, even in the minority, because I know one day I will bring you guys back to the majority. In 2016, Donald Trump was elected president. His declining popularity, particularly among women and moderate Republican voters, presented an opportunity for Pelosi to regain control of the House. Pelosi uses that energy, that backlash to Trump, to do an incredible job of recruiting. They get a lot of great candidates, and they are poised to go on and win in the 2018 midterms, win the majority. Today is more than about Democrats and Republicans. It's about restoring the Constitution's checks and balances to the Trump administration. While some in her party occasionally suggested it was time for her to step aside in favor of younger Democratic colleagues, she was also praised for holding her own in moments like her December 2018 meeting with Trump. Mr. President, please don't characterize the strength that I bring to this meeting as the leader of the House Democrats because Trump had this deep disrespect of her, rather than cutting into her power, it only helped her. Her supporters would say she's never backed down from President Trump. She introduced articles of impeachment in 2020 and again in 2021 for the January 6th insurrection on the United States Capitol. With Joe Biden as president, Pelosi effectively kept her slim majority together to pass numerous consequential bills. She is often tagged by Republicans as this San Francisco liberal, but really deep down, she is much more of a bare knuckle, East Coast type of politician who understands tactically, I need this person and I need that person, I build this coalition and then that's how I get something passed. She is probably the most effective speaker in U.S. history because we have seen her, especially in this last term, 
be able to corral support and make sure that every single one of her members are able to pass legislation with very, very narrow majorities. And that's something that, you know, now that we're talking about the future, if, if she's no longer there, will, will future Democrats be able to, you know, have a hold of their caucus in the same way? And the same question goes for Republicans who may step up to the majority.